after you and every one of them. G'day guys, welcome to Flow Lounge, late October edition, number three. Number three, that's right. And you're just back from Queensland, Nick. Mm, check out my tan. Whew. I've uh, just returned from tropical North Queensland where we checked out the 2014, 2016 and 2017 World Cup and World Championships course in Cairns. Yeah, you sent through some photos from the cross country one and there's some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, big there's, jumps. There's, there's big jumps in the cross country course, there's rock gardens that'll scare the crap out of you in the downhill course and it's, it's just going to be an awesome week. I mean, you can go up there and you can uh, ride Smithfield with your existing trails, check out the best racing in the world and I think everyone who's in a mountain biking will be there and, and mm. in, in Australia again. It's going to be great that... Are you going to be there? I'll be there. It's cool. Kansas back on the international mountain biking calendar. It's party exciting. party time. It's very exciting. Yep. Last time we saw Cairns on the uh, World Cup circuit was in the days of VHS. And you weren't even riding then. I wasn't, I wasn't even riding. No. And I remember watching that on SBS taping it and I uh, watched that footage of the highlights of Dunning's Explorers about 5,000 5, times. The course is the downhill course. Um, some pretty big old rocks and steep up the top. It follows roughly the alignment yeah. of the original track. Pretty much, pretty much the same alignment. A few variations, a bit wider, faster, uh, and they've definitely capitalised on the areas to make it great for filming and spectating. And it's just going to be a, um, it's going to be very, very unique. It's not, it's not going to be like a course like it on the national circuit and the cross country in particular, I think. Um, they've put so much hard work into figuring out a way to make a challenge for the rider um, and good viewing and safe. And um, yeah, it's crazy jungle up there, so it's going to be pretty cool for the Europeans and the US guys to, and guys and girls to come out and, and try not to get eaten by whatever's lurking in the bushes. Speaking of tree climbing kangaroos, um, you also went to Atherton, where we're heading again in oh, two and a half weeks, three weeks time. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was it like? There's a lot of talk about Atherton. Atherton, there's a lot of hype, um, mainly because they've they've secured you know large large funding to build and market a phenomenal mountain bike park just in town. And Atherton is only just over an hour uh, southwest of Cairns. Mm. Really nice drive, like through cane fields and over the range and up quite high. Like, it's um, you know, five degrees cooler in the middle of the day than Cairns and it's a good day trip for most people and it, there's an awful lot of trails there. We, we rode 30-something 30, 30 something k's of trails, there's going to be about 100. Um, 100 kilometres. Of single track. From, uh, from Atherton you continued your journey northward. Yes, we went to uh, rode some trails near Port Douglas, riddled with epic water bars that one of our, one of our members of the mountain biking Cycling Australia, Tim Sheedy, um, department crashed and pretty much skinned every part of his body. Tore half his face off. Yeah, every part of his body was bleeding. He, descri bleeding. he described his state to me as looking like a drunk who had fallen down and then been bashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he broke his handlebar in half too. Did He's he? fine. Yeah, <laughs> he went over a water bar a bit fast. From there, we went further up, way up, um, to cook down further. Drove up to the Dane Tree Forest, it was really nice. And actually, I've raced. The Croc Trophy now. You are officially a European hard man. Hard man. <laughs> um, we were lucky to join in socially the last stage of the Croc Trophy, which is um, last of seven or so days of hard race. Loved it. It was really quite a, quite a cool experience to have known this race for years, reported on it, uh, published photos of it, seen video of it, but I've never been there. And to be, be a part of it was a real honour. And, um, and congratulations to Mark Frendo. Mark Frendo. The quiet engineer, young fella from... Brisbane, no, nailed it, dominated every stage, uh, never had a bad day, trained hard. <laughs> cool bloke, we've got an interview with him coming up um, on flowmountainbike.com soon. Um, yeah, it was interesting chatting with him, he definitely a unique approach on how he got there and why he was there. I think it's only the second time an Australian's ever won the croc. Yeah, last time was in 2005 mm -hmm. and 2004 with Adam Hansen, the hard man now racing on that Lotto Bellasol team. I've been riding this thing. This is the... Um, the Yeti SB75. Looks like it fell out of a mango tree. Did fall out of a mango tree. Um, it's got 27 and a half inch wheels. It's uh, along with the 575. You might have seen our little interview with Paul Rowney a couple of weeks ago. Along with the 575, it is uh, one of Yeti's um, two new 27 and a half inch wheel bikes. Great bike. Review's going to be coming up very, very shortly. Um, it's definitely um, a bike that has probably wider appeal than, um, say, the SB66, which we're big fans of here, um, and a very nice bike. 
Um, another cool little thing that arrived today. <coughs> Finally, Australian standards have let the Bell Super Helmet come in. Now these okay. things. Look okay, how enduro I am. Yeah, um, and they're a really cool helmet. Now Australian helmet standards law laws are um, really a complicated scenario, um, which means we don't get a lot of helmets here that you see overseas. But this one has um, has made it through somehow. Cool. So it's great. It looks cool, Mick. Thanks, man. It's all right. It kind of matches your shirt with the stripes. Speed. Speed stripes.